kitchen, something like that, or go learn how to produce your own food, because there's so much incredible opportunity in transforming your, your dependence on a grocery store, your dependence on the food industry, transforming that into community interdependence. And it's just incredible the kind of people you can meet, the connections you build with people. So what might seem like an overwhelming question of what can I do really becomes this incredible opportunity to connect with an amazing community of people. Uh, Joel Salatin has also written extensively about it, and uh, he's also a great inspiration. He'll be here on Thursday for those of you who are coming back. And he's got some really great ideas, and I encourage anybody who's interested in, in, in looking at that question and searching in your own life for the answer to read some of what Joel contributes and to find your own personal hero and then search for the opportunities that most inspire you. answer. <laughs> well, um, I, I definitely have some thoughts on this. Um, I'm, I'm from New England, and uh, <clears throat> we're hammered with uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson as kids in, in elementary school. And he had this saying, he said, if you do the thing, you will have the power. If you do not do the thing, surely you will not have the power. So when it comes to food sovereignty, and that's really what this is. You having the right to pick what you're gonna eat, not only having what they put in front of you. If you want that right, and you wanna guarantee that right, it's up to you. You need to do the thing. And like Liz said, boy, just showing up, that's, that's 90% of it. You guys showing up here was really, really good. And, um, and then look for the opportunities and, and do them. Whether we, we run a program called Anyone Can Farm. And we came up with that name because industrial ag right now is saying, you can't farm, only we can farm. And we stole that line from uh, the movie Ratatouille, where the chef said, you, you can't cook. And then the rat winds up cooking and, and making good dishes. So that's why we stole that, because you can farm. And if you're growing some tomatoes out on your porch, you're farming. You don't have to have 100 acres or 80 acres, or even five acres. If you have a, a small yard, you can grow food in it, and that's farming. So that, I think that's the answer. Um, a little while ago when they started rattling their saber about taking guns away from people, whether it was real or perceived, what did people do? They all went out and bought guns. So right now, they're threatening your food supply, and I'm, I'm here to tell you that they definitely are. You need to grow your own food. You need to grow your own food. I'd say you, you also need, if you, if you earn it, I, I, I come from the position that I'm not, that doesn't come easily for me, yeah. or naturally to me, so I have to maybe Find also farm. secure my, my supplies, and uh, that through. Green fan, green fan, I'll do it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and I have to, I have to um, be there with, with, my, with the farmers that I support. Yeah, and that's kind of where I was going to go because it is about individual responsibility, not only in your day-to-day -day life and taking steps to start not only questioning and becoming inspired, but also start making the choices where you're taking the initiative to grow your own food in this case. But also what I try and remember is that it's really about the community as well. We are connected in so many different ways, so keeping that community alive and flourishing is such an important aspect to the food movement because part of at least what I see as tactical is a fear mechanism. So we're put into a state of fear. Oh, you can't grow your own food. Or we need to take control of, you know, we as the agribusiness want control because you can't, you don't know the safety, you don't know, you're not, you know, whether you're not smart enough or whatever, but the safety is put into somebody else's hands. So we've given up a lot of that freedom. So keeping the community alive and taking that personal step into the, you know, 
making not only what I say as your, your dollars or your actual voice. So making your dollars count, sharing that with your community. And that includes getting to know your farmer and asking the questions where you're empowering and educating yourself. Because when you're afraid of something, it's because you don't know. So to dispel that fear, it comes from educating yourself and empowering yourself so you can get beyond that mindset where you're stuck and you have to ask for a handout. And that's not, I think, you know, in our, in our genes in a way, I think we want to be a part of something and we want to embrace the community. So instead of doing that in fear, I think it should be taken in the perspective of love. So we grow beyond whatever fear is put upon us and become stronger for it. So. The, uh, the, uh, the famous Margaret Mead uh, quote that's on the wall in my office, we've all heard a million times that uh, a small group of determined people um, have the power to change the world. Indeed, that's the only way the world's ever been changed. But this, there's enough people in this room to change the world. If you're determined and, uh, and believe uh, that, uh, in the truth and, and carry it forward. And uh, he said also something about the, the, the empowering yourself, educating yourself on this subject. Uh, personally, I have, I have just supreme confidence. I, I can sit down with anybody. There was a letter to the editor that was written by the, uh, the uh, head of the Department of uh, Health in the county that I live in, Wisconsin, really dissing uh, people thinking about drinking unpasteurized milk because it was so dangerous. I called him up and said, can I come talk to you? And he said, sure. I went in and sat, and <clears throat> I took my book with him. I even brought it with me here today. In here, I have all my all my ammunition, and uh, I said, what, "What's the deal? Why uh, why uh, why did you write this?" And he said, "Well, according to the Center for Disease Control, wait a minute, exactly where did they say that?" They said, "Well, I said, no, I've got it." And I pulled it out and I showed them the documents and, and the and the details and the safety uh, 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 statistics. And in an hour's time, I swear this guy's saw the world differently. Softened anyway. Oh, he saw the world differently, and I and I've met with uh, um, you know three or uh, four now different state assemblymen and senators, each for an hour or so at a time. You tell the whole story very lucidly, clearly, and truthfully, and uh, they're disarmed. 